You want to do a countdown? Sure. All right. Three, Three two, two, one. one. Hi, everyone. Welcome Hello. to the Sea Brigade podcast. Hello. Uh, the Broadchurch special. Uh, so <laughs> we're not revealing any episodes today, but um, I did go out to England for nine days. And uh, one of the things I specifically went to go uh, visit was the West Bay cliffs where a lot of Broadchurch was shot. So I thought... We would do an episode about that. Um, kind of just you know, feed you a little bit something while Broadchurch is on hiatus. Um, and then, you know, we'll we'll catch up whether me and Emily have been up to, right? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> and then uh, what we're going to do in the future. Uh, we'll just say that right now. We're, we are committed to doing a True Detective podcast. Yep. Uh, I have no idea what we're going to call it yet, though. Yeah, we're not... We, we haven't... We'll take suggestions for names if you want. You can email us with name suggestions. I almost, I mean, I a part of me wants, uh, I mean, we have this cute little everything is at, you know, Sea Brigade, Sterling Brigade. Um, if we did a Game of Thrones podcast, it might be Sea Worth Brigade or East Narrow Sea Brigade. Um, the Stannis Brigade. I... <laughs> <laughs> no I'm no still spoilers, team, I'm, but... Oh. Yeah, I'm still I'm still Team Stannis in the books. Okay. Um, what else could we? I I mean, I, if I had it my way, I might just call it like the Rust Brigade or the Rusty Brigade. I'm not sure. Doesn't really fit the naming structure. <laughs> the time is a flat circle brigade. But yeah, I I think what's interesting about maybe doing True Detective is that it's a clean slate thing. Yeah. And. You know, there's no reason, you know, we can go into there and we can compare it to season one, but they're not connected, which is kind of a relief, you know. Right. Anybody and could, we don't anybody really know. could jump in. Yeah, you know? we don't really know what to expect either. So, mm-hmm. like, we, we kind of know the story, but not really. Yeah, and I, I totally don't expect it to revolve around serial killing or anything like that. So. No. Um, that's, yeah. Uh. You know, what I'm just thinking, Emily. We should probably do a like a True Detective pre podcast where we talk about mm. season one and how yeah. we felt about season one. Oh, I'd love to have an excuse to rewatch it all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? I could totally maybe not all the episodes, but maybe all the episodes. I'll probably watch all the episodes because <laughs> I'll have no other commitments then. So, other than okay. like just work during the day, but. But enough news about us. Let, I want to talk about uh, what's happening in, in Broadchurch news. Um, so some of this stuff is uh, stuff I think I could have reported on earlier, but I didn't realize how significant it was going to be. So like back in February, mm-hmm. Olivia Coleman announced she was pregnant with her mm-hmm. third child. Mm-hmm. And I think that's and is totally responsible on part of the... Uh, the showrunners um, is part of the reason why Broadchurch season three is not scheduled to film in 2015. Mm-hmm. They're giving Olivia Coleman the time to be a human being who is <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. giving birth to a child. <laughs> yeah. um, but then some other actors were saying, so, and it, it might just, you know, it might, there might be some truth to it or, but uh, Andrew Buckhan, uh, who plays Mark Latimer, mm-hmm. uh, he was saying he's not sure if he's coming back. He, oh. just that he, he just doesn't know what the story is in the next season. Um, you know, and of course, David Tennant and Olivia and Coleman are confirmed to come back. Like, that's that's the first thing you would put in a press release. Right. Uh, and I feel like the Latimers are all coming back. Um, I feel like this is just one actor uh, who's just not sure because they really know nothing about what the next season is. Right. But if, if you're going back to Broadchurch... We're going to revisit all the characters again, so. Right. Um, and there was also another story I found, which it's not so much cute as like a little, little bit of a bummer, but I think Olivia Coleman was saying that um, she was struggling for roles. Like sometime after, mm-hmm. like the first season of, of Broadchurch got her all these like awards that mm-hmm. she didn't get any phone calls for like hmm. six months, and hmm. she, I, I think. Uh, the theory is that it's not that people don't want Olivia Coleman in their in their projects. It's that they think she's busy. Yeah, <laughs> she's she's on this really good show. It's um, true. 
uh, I saw a conference. I, I think this is to do with the. You know, she's busy with family stuff right now, but uh, she's not appearing in this. Uh, re- there's a remake of a short film she was in called The Carmen Line. <laughs> Never heard of it. Uh, so here's the thing. Uh, when I was on the airplane to England, mm-hmm. um, Virgin Airlines had this movie for, you know, you could rent it um, called The Carmen Line. And I, I read the blurb and it's like Olivia Coleman stars <laughs> as a woman who ha- has a rare disease that is making her slowly float up. <laughs> and like she's just like uh, she's just floating higher and higher in the atmosphere and her family just has to deal with the fact that they're going to lose her. It's so strange. Yeah, it sounds like I mean, it's definitely a drama. But with mm-hmm. it, you know, it's it's a type of thing where I feel like dramas don't have to be realistic. Sometimes a good drama can arise right. from this really weird situation. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like um Oh, I'm blanking out on the man's name. Uh I believe he's a French t- director he did uh well the movie's melancholia oh i don't um, know he made um antichrist and that movie with well he's worked at charlotte gainsbourg like, oh oh lars von Trier? lars von Cher. yeah yeah um and like that movie is that movie deals with a lot of drama about a planet that's going to smash into earth <laughs> mm-hmm. it's like the premise is wacky but you know the drama is very real so <laughs> i, I kind of like those types of things so that's a 20 so olivia coleman's in this 24 minute short film and i guess spike lee is adapting it into a, a big screen picture <laughs> um and yeah olivia coleman's not going to be in the in the big one so mm-hmm. <laughs> that's thing. but you know what since we that last news story kind of it dipped a bit into the, the, the trip, so... Yeah. Uh, I think I'll just start talking about it. So, uh, I went into England to uh, visit uh, a longtime friend of, of five years who... She's moved around the country, but she was originally from, like, Hereford and then is in Southampton. Um, so, I spent m- much of the time in Southampton. Uh, but I visited... Well, I flew into London. Uh, I saw no London landmarks. <laughs> Which kills um, me, but yeah. I understand. London was a, a means to an end to visit my friend. Um, I saw London Heathrow. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that was no. So I saw um, spent most of those nine days. I mean, every day I was sleeping in Southampton, um, but I basically spent like three days in Southampton just relaxing. Uh, then we hit Winchester, and I'm drinking mm. tea from a Widards in in Winchester. Mm. Um, then the next day we well the next day is the big thing, um, in which we took uh, the train to Weymouth, um, wandered around uh, Weymouth, which is a really nice, cute beach town, um, and the water there was beautiful, and you could see all sorts of like cliffs from there. You couldn't see the mm-hmm. the West Bay cliffs, but you could see like these nice white cliffs and. It, like what Weymouth, uh, from what I could tell, like it was, it was like your definition of a cute beachside town where there's an arcade, oh. a, a saltwater taffy place, uh, nice little cafes. Anyways, from there we took the uh, the bus along the Jurassic Coast. Um, <laughs> they have these uh, buses there called the Jurassic Coasters, and they have like cartoon characters of little kids dressed up as like. Oh, what's the word for them? Kind of like the guys who dig up fossils and stuff. Archaeologists? Yeah. So they have <laughs> kids and like they have kids in like Dr. Alan Grand costumes. <laughs> and we 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 didn't take that bus. We took the regular I think it was called like an X fifty three. Um okay. but we took the bus uh to West Bay and it was crazy. Like that that bus took you on a really scenic route where uh we were just raising an altitude i feel like we were going way uphill and you can see the ocean and we descended and then when we hit west bay um it was it was it's funny because it's a real town but i look at it and i can't help but um kind of 
think of it as broad church oh uh, well because okay so the, the thing is like you get there we get off the bus and there are things that like you know i, I believe the town of broad church is shot in bristol but there are things in that town that still make me think of broad church where there's a there's a little church um there's these um, specifically these six fish and ships sh- like shacks like mm-hmm. they're yeah. really tiny establishments that i think each of them serves fish and ships but each of them serves slightly different types of side foods so they don't step on each other's toes i think like one is like hey we have fish and chips and ice cream and the other ones we have fish and chips and pretzels or fish and chips and burgers so those were all really cute um across the street from there there's like a a harbor like a little docking thing Mm -hmm. that was really low on water it reminded me I f- they might have shot there i'm not sure but like um i mean it really we couldn't wait to like get to the beach so we kind of breezed through all that stuff and i mean once you get to the beach like you know it um and it's funny because like uh the way the the landscape is um you're walking towards the beach and all you can see is like um it's it's a kind of uphill like you can see mm-hmm. Uh, this horizon line where it's just sand. And once you get to the top of that and look to your left, you can see the uh, the east cliffs where they, you know, those are the broad church cliffs, essentially. Uh, and then you just see the, the ocean and it's just magnificent. Oh. Um, something that's really interesting, it was, uh, it felt really cool about the, the, just the beach there in West Bay was that there wasn't, like, there wasn't a boat in sight. You know, there was really? like nothing, there was nothing man-made hmm. out on the water, which was so nice for a change. Yeah. Because um, you, know, you go out to Jones Beach and you'll see, sometimes not the most uh, scenic boats. <laughs> you'll see like right. uh, barges or industrial right. ships. <laughs> right. Uh, and uh, even in, in Weymouth, like... Uh, it was like a nice view from their beach, but there was also like, um, there was this dock that was touristy is not the the right word to use, but like mm-hmm. there was like a pirate themed attraction, and then this um, this observation tower that went mm-hmm. up. So you can, and I was like, yeah, but West Bay is like um, incredibly natural, where, uh, and and it feels really nice where you're on this beach, surprisingly not crowded, like. Um, there were moments when we were standing in front of the cliffs and if you look to your left and to your right, uh, you might have not seen anybody for a long, long time. So, uh, that was, I mean, maybe it was just the time of year, like, uh, sometime in May, but like, it was like really, it felt like really natural, which was cool. Cause like I, I described the experience, not just because of broad church, but just what you're looking at as kind of like this, um, spiritual thing Mm. um and i'm not like a spiritual person in like a religious sense but more like oh this is like a very natural thing that makes you feel small and think about your your planet in a different way Um, yeah because so as you approach like the the cliffs um they have signs saying like we strongly advise you not to stand at the base of the Uh (laughs) the cliffs because thing (laughs) you know things can fall apart Mm -hmm. um you know, in season two, uh, I think it might be Mark. So, like somebody talks about how, like, oh, like the cliffs falling apart again. Mm, uh, and that's not, yeah. Well, it's not just like a, a, it's not just something they say in the show because it, it's thematically relevant. Like there are parts of that cliff uh, where it, you know, it looks like oh that could have fallen apart yesterday. I would I would have believed that that's a recent thing. Um, but in any case, like, uh, so this is footpath that goes up a cliff, you know, it, it, in the show, you're familiar with it, like, like the, there's like a grassy knoll that kind of is on the cliff's backside, but on the, on the front side of the cliff is just this orangey rock. Um, that was something I was really happy about was like the, the show didn't filter anything like the cliffs look exactly like they do in the show. Yeah, I was looking at your pictures, and it looks like it's just a scene from the show. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, I should also say I went out to the uh, the dock, and yeah. I I very well might have sat in the same chair as Olivia Coleman and David Tennant, but I mean I didn't check to make sure I was sitting in the right bench. <laughs> But I brought my friend uh, from England. I'm like, okay, we have to go sit in these <laughs> in these chairs. And <laughs> did you eat fish and chips in them or no? Yes, I ate fish and oh, well, I didn't eat fish and chips uh, in in those seats, but I ate fish and chips in West Bay. That's good. Yeah, and it was really cute too because the the, the town people there are just like so mm-hmm. like um, we were just eating fish and chips and then this little old woman in the call walker came by mm-hmm. and she's like oh can i sit there yeah and I, so I moved my backpack off the bench and scooted over mm-hmm. and she sat down with us and we were eating fish and chips and then this little starling came over and uh if yeah at first it was one starling then it was two and three and they were all like they were all sitting like on the sidewalk like very close to us like we could have kicked them <laughs> like there was <laughs> They were that close to our shoes, and they're just sitting there begging for, you know, like, fish and chips. And this little old woman's just like, they weren't that brave when I was your age. <laughs> Pigeons so, these days, or starlings these days. Yeah, and then, like, a couple who was walking their dog around uh, brought over their dogs to scare away the starlings. <laughs> And we were like, thank you. <laughs> and then the dog was like looking for in the, uh, for the fish and chips. And she's like, yeah, just don't feed our dog. We're cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, like everyone we met there was, um, you know, it's maybe a small slice of the town, but it was, it was really sweet. Uh, but so when we, you know, we got to the, the, the cliff, we decided we were going to walk the entire length mm-hmm. of the first set of cliffs. There's like kind of... It's hard to describe, but there's kind of like two sets of of cliff. One's much, much farther, and the other one, you know. And it took us a while to walk that length, but I think because it was because we were taking pictures. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at my feet trying to collect or find, like, cool-looking rocks. Yeah. Yeah, so... um, And just there's just interesting things along the entire path of walking there. Like, we found... Um, we found, uh, seagulls and, like, crows, like, who would, they were, like, nesting inside the cliff. Hmm. Or, like, there were pockets in the cliff, there was, like, cracks, tiny, you could call them craves or nooks, Mm -hmm. and, you know, they were living in there. Um, and also, just, just the way the cliff is structured, um, you understand why it's called the Jurassic Coast, because it's just, like... I feel like it, it the the cliff was built in layers. Like if you mm-hmm. if you look at the picture you can see how um a single layer of stone is consistent throughout the entire cliff. So it's like when I think about it it's like okay that means that um wh- how many thousands of years ago this cliff was formed. Right. Uh, that's you know the the earth was in such a way that it formed this pumicey like porousy rock. And then the layer above that is a, is more like sandstone, I think. Um, so there, there were. Uh, so what happens is, so at the very base of the cliff, there are these very flat rocks, and they almost look like man-made benches, but they're they're mm-hmm. not. You know, that's just how this is the terrain there. But so the, it, it winds up happening is that there's really comfortable places to sit because the earth just formed these really flat stones. Um, the the other thing it was super windy. I mean, it was warm out. It was actually a really beautiful day, um, but it made me think like you know, when they were shooting that show, uh, the, there's somebody off camera with a huge wind screen just blocking the wind from affecting the microphones. I think yeah, but, there's got to be if it's that windy. Like, um, also, I didn't tell my friend that. Uh, the cliffs was the scene of a murder in the first season. You didn't? No, because I feel like that could have been a bummer. <laughs> oh. Right? Yeah, I suppose. Um, I don't know. <laughs> but, so, yeah, it was it was really beautiful. The, the rocks, um, it was like a, it was a stony beach. Um, and it was like the first stony beach that I had really seen. Um, you, you, we were at Bristol, no, what what beach were you at? Brighton, right? Brighton, yes. 
was that one very stony? rocky yes okay yeah you could totally tell that um, my friends and i were the americans because we were the only ones not wearing three two, two one, one. <laughs> all right okay. we're back yeah so you were saying uh, you were just going on about how you were you were brighton beach, yeah, right? yeah 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 so yeah it was a stony rocky beach and you could totally tell that we were the americans in the group because we were not wearing water shoes and everyone else was wearing water shoes. Like, I don't know if people on, uh, in West Bay were wearing water shoes. Um, you know what? I went with some sandaly type things mm-hmm. that my, my dad described them as water shoes. But, mm-hmm. um, you know what? I ended up, I, I put them on at first mm-hmm. um, and I found that rocks were getting into the sandals. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, hey, you know what? I'll walk barefoot. Mm-hmm. So I walked barefoot most of the way, and then I changed my mind on the way back. Mm-hmm. And I think it helped me walk faster on the way back. But um, the stones really weren't. Um, well, I didn't think they were beating up my feet that bad. Um, and then the next day, uh, my feet looked pretty rough. <laughs> yeah, we like. I don't know how big the rocks were on in West Bay Beach, but at Brighton Beach, they were very, very, um, like, they were kind of jagged, I guess, and they were difficult to walk on. So we would, like, crawl from the water to um, our towels up, like, a little hill. And, you know, we, we probably looked like utter idiots and total tourists, but you got to do what you got to do. Three, two, two one. one. Okay, um, so Skype is being real weird, so I think this whole... I mean, the good thing is we got about 20-something minutes of solid podcasting before mm-hmm. it got all choppy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, I'm going to just keep going through some pictures. I think Yeah. I, I, one of the things I can't stress enough is just how tall the cliff mm-hmm. uh, feels when you're at the base of it. Oh, gosh, yeah, it looks... I mean, it is uh, enormous. Yeah, um, I, I have to say, if you're if you're a fan of the show who's in England and a fan of Broadchurch, you deserve to, you know, give yourself the experience of going down there and, and seeing those cliffs. You know. One of my favorite stories that you told me, though, is just because um, what you brought me back from your trip to England was a rock from West Bay. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> when you told your parents, you told them, oh, I got Emily a rock. And they were like, you got her a rock? And when... You gave me the rock. I was like, oh, my God, a rock for Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. My my parents totally lack the context for how cool something <laughs> from that from that beach is. I was um, like, a rock, a rock. Yeah, I, I have, a, I have a, a few with me. They all have my, my dad. Uh, my dad's guess is iron deposits hmm. where uh, a lot of my the rocks are brought back. Um, have like spots of orange or like rust mm. on them. Mm. Uh, I have one that's like kind of got like a shiny jewel part in the middle. One that's flat. One that feels very. Um, one that's black and light and kind of chalky. Like I get the idea that if I. Uh, we learned about it in geology, where like if you if you rub the rock on something and it leaves a trail, it's got like a. Well, that's a quality of a rock, <laughs> but it's um. Yeah, the, the, it was like a diverse bunching of of rocks there, and walking along it barefoot, there was no, there was nothing that like made me. There was no sharp rock. Um, th- there's lots of big rocks, like there's lots of rocks scattered around the beach that are like, I can't call them boulder size, but they're, they're rocks that you can't pick up. Hmm. Like they're some big ass rocks, <laughs> and then. You know, uh, my friend, she was wearing a Converse. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think that was spectacular. I think, uh, I think my sand shoes worked a little bit, uh, you know, the sandals worked a little bit better for, um, kind of just traverse, because I I feel like, uh, soft canvas shoes still can get beat up a little bit. Yeah, Uh, I remember when I... Well, what, the shoes that I wore to England were I had two pairs of Keds, and those aren't good beach shoes because they get like wet and gross. So it was either walk barefoot, or crawl across the sand, or ruin your shoes. So yeah, well, she was very much not about going in the water. I I, mm-hmm. I had to 
put my foot my feet in there just a little bit oh yeah i did too um try to think uh so lo- looking through the pictures and uh it, it's it's funny you, you you totally don't see it in in pictures of of like the the east cliff but there's a there's a point in it where it dips and uh the the cliff becomes quite short and then it comes becomes tall again, and that's before you reach like the second cliff. And uh, so there's there's this moment where the cliff is very um, short. So that's where we threw down our beach blankets and lay down for like thirty minutes. And uh, it was really beautiful just to do that. Um, was there anything about West Bay as it's portrayed in Broadchurch that surprised you about how it is in real life? Hmm. Um, you know what's funny? Okay, so it it could be that it's just it was just May, but mm-hmm. you know how in Broadchurch, uh, well, okay, the thing the thing about Broadchurch is that they talk about how oh the beach is such an important tourist attraction and um, the the town right. has like a uh, the, I mean there is a town center with a a newspaper and mm-hmm. all this. The actual town of West Bay is much smaller mm-hmm. than I think the fictional town of Broadchurch. Okay, because um, I, I think it's more quaint. I feel like the West. I feel like Weymouth was more. Uh, Weymouth had as many shops and as many businesses as fictional Broadchurch. Okay, I saw a lot of homes. Like when you're when you're right there, like there are restaurants and hotels, um, but. It feels much more quaint than uh, the fictional town, you know. Okay. Um, I have to. I have to say one of the one of the things that is, uh, and I saw it on the bus route, and it it it, it comes right when you reach the end of the first cliff. Uh, is there is a real caravan park? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You showed me the pictures. It's awesome. Yeah, and you know. We got to the end of the cliff and we thought, oh, maybe we'll we'll take the hiking path back up and walk on top of the cliffs. But it, we took a few steps into the caravan park and we we're like, you know what? Let's not go looking for the hiking path. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we turned around and just walked walked it back on the. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's 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 really nice. It's 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 funny too. I'm I'm looking at a picture of the, the second cliff and um, this. So they're both part of the East Cliffs uh, of West Bay. Okay. And, like, the second set looks much more um, rugged, um, which might be why you don't really see it in the show. It looks much more mm-hmm. like it's falling apart. Um, okay. But, yeah, I, I, I can't stress enough, it was it was sunny. Um, you know, every once in a while a breeze would come by that would make you shiver, but... Um, we met tons of people walking dogs, mm-hmm. uh, and it, when you when you got up to the uh, the low points where I suggest you know it's safer to go up and, <laughs> and touch the cliff, um, I can't stress enough how funny it is to touch one section of the cliff, which is hard. You know, it's porousy, like uh, like mm-hmm. pumice, like like there's lots of pores in the rock. And then there's un- the other section is just sandy. It's it just like the different parts of the cliff can feel so different. Um, I have to, there are tons of people. Um, I mean, well, okay, there aren't tons of people. When we were at the cliff, you know, there was never more than twenty people like hmm. on this beach. Um, but there are people who don't ignore. Who, you know, they ignore the the signs about staying away from the base of the cliff. Mm-hmm. So maybe they're regulars. Maybe they know that it's. Um, it's a rarity for things to fall, but there were tons of people who would just sit at the base of the cliff anywhere, even in the sections that are super huge. But okay, uh, um, I'm trying to think, there was a man. <laughs> we didn't actually see him very up close, but there was a there, there was a moment we were at the um, before we got to the cliff. We were just on the beach, and um, I can't like it's it's a very steep hill from like where the beach is to just the top of the the sands like before you get to the cliffs mm-hmm. and there's a guy standing there who i think had a hawk on his arm hmm. like he was like a hawk or like a bird trainer or something hmm. um 
Yeah, I don't know. I going to the cliffs uh, in West Bay in general was really everything I could have imagined it to be. Um, and the the fish and chips were awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know the name of the place, but if you're in West Bay and you go to that row of like six, um, if you go to that row of six fish and chip shacks, I went to the green one. <laughs> uh, yeah, there, there's like um. There's six of them, and they're they're mostly all different colors. And I just went to the green one, and um, we kind of made that choice, you know, based off of nothing. You know, we weren't yeah. going to try to look up Yelp reviews or anything like that. But <laughs> um, Yelp reviews for fish and chips shacks. Yeah, yeah. So I'm actually I'm looking at it right now. I'm trying to see if I can tell the name of this place, but I really can't. It was just the green shack. <laughs> Yeah, um, they, they not all of them were open, but uh, yeah, it was just really, really cute. Um, I'm trying to, th- uh, I took a picture of um, there was like a riverboat tour thing. Maybe okay. that's the direction of Hardy's house. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. So you no, know, so I was just looking up an article about. Um, oh my god. Yeah, so I was just looking up an article about um, what people are visiting in West Bay, and one of the things that people are visiting are, uh, you know, they're of course seeing the cliffs, but some of them are going out of their way to go see Hardy's Blue Shack. And Which you should have done. Yeah. You know, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm looking right now. Um, I doubt it, but I did take a picture. Behind the riverboat higher, there is a little blue shack, but that can't be it. Hmm. Is it on the water? It's on the water, but it it doesn't look right to me. Mm. It doesn't look like it's Hardy's Blue Sea Shack. <laughs> not the correct sea hut. <laughs> Hashtag yeah. not our sea hut. I don't know. I saw, I saw what I re- really wanted to see, which was the, <laughs> the cliffs. Um, I don't know. It, it might have been a little bit funny for me to drag my friend to go see a sea hut. <laughs> the sea hut. Yeah, it was the sea hut. Man, it's uh, that's probably the most sentimental part of the, you know, second only to actually seeing my friend, um, which was a big deal. Like, um, seeing the cliffs was really something. That's awesome. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. Yeah. Okay. So actually, that was the peak number of people I saw. It was twenty-one. <laughs> <laughs> In my picture of the cliffs, there's twenty-one people. Uh, two of them wow. have no. Three of them have dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it was so cute. I I definitely recommend it. Um, yeah, I don't know. So we, th- I mean, there's tons of stuff to talk about England wise. Um, but uh, do you want to go into that or? Maybe I mean, call. I I don't know if. I don't know. interest the, the <laughs> yeah. church fans. <laughs> right? Yeah, uh, well, you know what? I, I really wanted to give the Sea Brigade people something to listen to. Um, it, it's, it's funny, because we're not professional podcasters, but um, I, I... Well, as, as someone who pays um, a little bit each month to keep the podcast feed up, it's the type of thing where... Um, it's the type of thing where I, a part of me feels like, oh, well, I'm paying for this podcasting space. I should put something up. Mm-hmm. And the, certainly the last few episodes of the Sterling Brigade, um, which didn't feature you. It was like a friend, Bobby. Uh, they fe- I, I didn't feel completely honest as like a podcasting person. Like I, mm-hmm. I felt like I was producing stuff to throw it out there. Um, yeah. Well, I think it's hard to like, do a podcast for a show where you're going back to season one when mm-hmm. you're not producing something for the current season. Like my brother and I, we did a pot one episode for the current season, but you know, it just becomes too much. I think to kind of do, cause my brother's not, you know, he'd never podcasted before. I don't do it on a regular basis unless I'm with you. And yeah, I think it becomes difficult when it's not something that people are immediately interested in, but I'm really excited to then do the true detective podcast. 
and then hopefully to do the Fargo podcast in, I guess, yeah. the fall. Yeah. I- I'm glad those things are at different times, because I feel like, yes. didn't True Detective and Fargo kind of... Did they overlap last year? Or last no? year, True Detective was in the winter, and then Fargo was, like, in this time now. Because I remember, okay. like, I remember I watched... Um, like, my parents were really into it, and then I moved back home for the summer, and I watched, like, all of them in, like, two days and caught up in time for the finale. And that oh, was, Fargo? Like, yeah. Yeah. Fargo that was, was so good. great. Oh, I loved Fargo. I mean, I loved True Detective, too. I watched True Detective, actually, after Fargo. Mm-hmm. I watched True Detective. I didn't watch it as it aired. I watched it in the summer. And I told myself, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to, like, pace myself, you know? I think, I think I did the same. I was not watching True Detective as it was airing. And yeah, you of, watched it after I did. Yeah, well, I was I was like, ignoring everyone who was talking about how how good it was. Like something about the name. Well, here's the here's the thing. I think the last thing I'm interested in is pro- procedural cop stuff, and that's not what True Detective is. But no. I mean, tell me that True Detective doesn't sound like the name of a show that would air on CBS and Star. Well, I was really wary of it at first because I remember when it was premiering, like they were making a big deal of the fact that the Game of Thrones season four trailer was in the middle of it. And I'm like, that can't be a good sign for the show if like the only reason you want people to watch it is because of the Game of Thrones trailer in the middle. And I remember my dad watched it and he was like, no, it was really good. It was kind of like my uh, brother watched it and I didn't watch it until the summer. Do you remember like, (laughs) oh God, I'm going to butcher the name of the show, but it was like. Winter, low winter sun. <laughs> low winter sun. The Breaking sun. Bad show, yeah, where they kept like you had to watch Low Winter Sun to get the preview of the next episode. And it's like nah, because your show sucks. Yeah, well, yeah, I didn't, I, I, I didn't know. Yeah, I was, I was thinking Winter Sundown. I'm like, Winter that's the, Sundown. <laughs> it's the right combination of words. Um, but yeah, it's a podcasting is like a is a funny thing because, um. You know, you could uh, you could put out Sterling Brigade, and you can get the you can get the download numbers and, and go, oh wow, like we did um, so how many thousand in in, in May, but mm-hmm. it can feel empty when yeah, you, know, you don't get like the same kind of feedback as you did from the broad right. church. Right. And well, it, it's hard when you do something in hindsight because people aren't going to be responding because they're not watching it with you. Mm-hmm. Well, because th- yeah, that's that's just the thing is. Uh, I saw the Sterling Brigade as a opportunity for me to like force myself to watch Mad Men, mm-hmm. and the truth is, once we stopped recording Sterling Brigade, I stopped watching Mad Men. Really? Yeah. So I think as much as I I liked what I've watched of Mad Men, um, there's still something about the show. I mean, that, I would say yeah. to finish season one because I feel like that's when people mostly get hooked because mm-hmm. you just you just want to keep watching. Also, the finale of season. One is just like the most beautiful thing. I cry every time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I cry every time. Yeah, I'm. I'm glad television is going to give us stuff to podcast about because. Yes, I'm very excited for that. Um. Because it sounds like we're not going to get Broadchurch back for a long time. Yeah. Like if they start filming in 2016, it will be a bit into 2016 mm-hmm. when we do that. Yeah, if not 2017. Mm-hmm. So. Which is crazy to think about. Yeah, and you know what? And Fargo is also going to be um, kind of separate. You know, like it, it, mm-hmm. it's a it's a prequel to season one in a mm-hmm. way, but also mm-hmm. right an individual story. That, right. I would um, love to watch Fargo again too. I've never seen Fargo. I mean, the movie. Oh, I meant like uh, Fargo. I was want to watch Fargo the TV, the, TV, the, the TV show again. Yeah, but I can't believe you've never seen the movie. That's crazy. Yeah, and there, there's parts of the uh, there's parts of season one that would not be hard to watch again, but like that show can be dark, you know. Oh yeah, well I mean, True Detective's really dark too. Yeah. Oh, the part when um the the uh, what's his name, Reggie Ledoux comes out of the house and like he's got the gas mask on. I'm just like, <laughs> yes, it's horrifying. Also, yeah. That that is an image seared into my head. And also, just a really that episode of True Detective is really good. Yeah, I feel like this is slowly turning into our True Detective people. But, <laughs> but we should. I, I need to go back and re- and refresh my True Detective. Same. So I think Same. we'll um, probably call that the end of our little Broadchurch special. Yeah, uh, I suppose uh, that was cute. 
Yeah, I mean the the only I th- I, th- I think the only thing we can give Broadchurch fans after, and this is this is saying a lot because it, it um, you know after we do True Detective after we do Fargo, if there's if we're if we have the energy and time available, maybe we can do season one. <laughs> yeah, I mean that would be interesting, or maybe it's better suited to like a follow like when when season three is actually like coming. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, we can so do like, whenever. Basically, we need to wait for some mm-hmm. nugget of news or for another yeah. member of the show to go to England. <laughs> <laughs> um, give that little travel log. I mean, one of the things uh, I've been thinking about is, man, I need to go. I need to go watch the first episode of the show and see how much is. I need to go see uh, how much is Broadchurch. Mm. And how much is, or sorry, how much of the town of Broadchurch is West Bay and how much is unfamiliar? Yeah, um, that'd be really interesting. Because it, one of the things in my head from the premiere of, like, the first episode of Broadchurch is, mm-hmm. you remember how there was the traffic buildup? Yeah, yeah. That would never happen. No. There's no way traffic could build up in West Bay. Like, it's just <laughs> so few cars <laughs> even. So mm-hmm. um, that's, that's the type of stuff I need to go back and look and because they did a really good job, um, you know, b- before I did my research, you know, when I was watching season one of Broadchurch, I would have believed, you know, of course this town with this magnificent landscape is going to have lots of, you know, businesses. <laughs> um, right, right. It's, it's really funny because, like, the people who live there have this, you know, you, uh, I, I, I wonder if the, the majesty of it all um, ever fades away or or whether or not you just appreciate that the entire time you live there um, i don't know it's interesting it would be absolutely cre- wonderful if somebody who lived in west bay was also a listener yeah um, that'd be crazy but you know i uh knew it would uh this this is what we would qualify in another c brigade special is uh if we get like ten emails that are worth reading, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you should write to seabrigadepodcast at gmail dot com, and yes, if, please. if we get if we get some ten emails or something, we'll come back and do like a we'll do like an email special. Yeah, so. and also please suggest names for our uh, our our true detective podcast. Yeah, well, we're running out of time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, at, at, the, at the very least. Um, Hmm. Yeah, you know, if we don't get any good suggestions, we could just roll with C Brigade and just yeah. call it C Brigade, a true detective podcast. <laughs> um, but we'll come up with something that works. Um, we'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. All right, but I think we're going to call that as episode of the C Brigade. All right. All right, so Emily, thanks for joining <laughs> oh, always a pleasure. Always mm-hmm. a pleasure. All right. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Yes, indeed. Hooray. All right. Bye, everyone. All right. Bye. Yeah.